computer-generated imagery. Shout out to the niggas that created CGI. For real. Because I knew it was a nigga that created it. He just didn't get credit. <laughs> 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 they fired him as soon as the shit went big. <laughs> like, you out of here. He's somewhere trying to get a job at Atari right now. That's <laughs> fucked up how they did him. Atari. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'd like to welcome you inside the GGN News Network. I'm your host with the most finding Nemo, AKA Nemo Hoes. And today I got two very special guests on my show, no, man. No. Yes, sir. From the new exciting movie, Coming to a Hood Near You, Meet the Blacks, I have the director, Dion Taylor, right. and the star of the movie, Mike Epps. Nemo, what it do? What what's happening? Hoes? What's up, big Snoop? Man, what's happening with the movie, man? Everybody's seeing the trailer, they looking at it, they seeing all this, this great, you know, comedy on screen. What gave y'all the idea to do this? You know what, brother Deion Taylor, the, the great director nigga he is, <laughs> stepped to me in a nigga environment, Snoop, mm -hmm. and had one of the greatest scripts and ideas that I've seen in a long time. He said, Mike, I got something for you. I said, oh yeah? He said, man, this is gonna be big. And I went and read it. It's called Meet the Blacks. It comes out April the 1st. Dion, tell them where we came up, how you came up with this great movie. <laughs> you know what, it's interesting, man. We was um, talking about this earlier today, but the idea actually came from, you know, the movie The Purge. So me being like a horror buff, going to all the movies that come out, I was really, really, really in love with The Purge, the concept of it. So one day I was walking, <laughs> walking my dog around the block, I thought to myself, like, wouldn't it be interesting if we took the Purge idea, but we put a black family in the middle of that world? You know, then the next thing was who could be the lead in the film, and that took another six months. <laughs> Just trying to figure out independently how could you approach, you know, whoever that comedian would be. And, um, you know, me being a huge Mike Epps fan, I had to wait for my shot. Mm -hmm. So I remember I flew down, man, from Sacramento, and Mike was having a big comedy show up there. So I flew there, got backstage, had an opportunity to sit with Mike and basically explain to him the idea about what the movie was, what it meant to me. So I, you know, pitched it to Mike and said, man, I don't want to do nothing slapstick. I just want to do something really cool. And uh, obviously Mike being the great businessman he is, he was like, yo, I see it too. And the rest is history. Mike, what made you know that this guy could handle you as a comedian and handle all those other comedians. Well, you know, Snoop, uh, Dion, Dion's worked with guys like Jamie Foxx and other other great comedians and other talents. And um, I kind of knew about Dion and heard about his work through the grapevine, seen a couple of his films that he did. And, um, you know, I really like his style. I like, I like the way he got us all together and, and had us all working together simultaneously and it was a team it was a teamwork effort yeah. you know and i think that that's important when you're doing a comedy movie uh that 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 demands a whole lot of different types of talents we had charlie murphy in it yeah. mike tyson we had george lopez in it mm. so when we when you have a whole bunch of different types of comedy take a guy like dion to be able to put it together and uh place it all in order will to, where to uh, run together and be funny. See, that's dope. That's like a great coach that knows how to handle all that talent. Because a lot of times, you know, directors get all of that talent and really don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of egos, attitudes, you know, right. that goes into all of that. And especially as comedians, I know that's like, y'all niggas damn near like rappers. You know, how <laughs> to be in it. And you niggas be man, into man, it with each man. other. Like, <laughs> so to see y'all all come together to be dope and funny as fuck for one cause, which is to make this movie this shit. Yeah. That lets me know this could be a classic like Harlem Nights. And that's what we've been looking for some shit like that where you got a bunch of great <clears throat> comedians doing their shit on screen, directed right. by a black man who knows how to project the vision yeah. of what's to, what's to be seen. That's right. That's real, Snow. Yeah, you know what else? It, it, it gets even a little deeper than that, man, when you really pull all the layers back and you start really talking about just, you know, the Hollywood business and what you're doing as an independent filmmaker. And oftentimes, man, you could actually, this could have been a completely different way because you mm -hmm. could get an actor 
you know, in this case, Mike came on not only just as an actor, he came on as a producer and a partner. Mm. So for me, we had to align that way because the only way to actually make a movie like this is to have someone who has 20 plus years in the game, who has the experience, who has the, the you know, his finger on the pulse of what's going on. Now, the flip side to this is if he's not sharing and if he's not doesn't have his ego, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then you don't get to make a movie like this. And that's what happens a lot of times in Hollywood. You know, it took a mic to be like, man, you know what? I'm good with George Lopez. I'm good with Lil Duval. I'm good with Michael Blackson. I'm good with Lavelle Crawford. I'm good with D-Ray. In order to allow this opportunity to even happen, yeah. you know what I mean? Because yeah, a lot not of time, wanting to be the lone comedian. That's exactly right, man. Like, like it's me, 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 yeah. me, 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 me. <laughs> like, nah, nigga, I'm gonna share the spotlight with these bad which motherfuckers. That's right. Which is gonna make us all bad because it's right. an all-star team effort. It's a dream team. Mm. This nigga fans now probably never really was fucking with me. Now they fucking with me. That's My right. fans fucking with him, and it's it's what it's supposed to be. Like I thrive for those kind of relationships. As me far too. As, to that's work right. with that kind of talent and be in the room with a bunch of bad motherfuckers and I'm the worst one, that's when you know this shit gonna yeah, be right. Yeah, that's when it's That's good. right, man. Yeah, that's how I feel. No, that's yeah. right, and, and, and I think it's a page from, you know, when you really look at just the state of black comedy right now, we don't do it enough. You yeah. know, you mentioned Harlem Nights and what Eddie Murphy was able to do. That's still a classic based on the fact that he took a Red Fox and a Richard Pryor, you know what I mean, and a, and a Bernie Mac and Charlie Murphy and put everybody and let everybody get down and do what they need to do so they could create their own fan base. So I just felt like, man, it'd be really dope to have someone of our cloth, like Mike, to come in and be like, yo, independent it's or not, we're doing it. Yeah, because every, I think everybody on. gonna watch this movie. It's don't yeah. have no color lines, because the way you got it casted and the way you got it, the, the story of it all, it's gonna it's be people. People are gonna go watch this <laughs> it's movie. A horror movie. Yeah, You're it's not a gonna say movie. that like these horror, people like are open. Horror, yeah, it's like a horror movie. It's a horror movie. <laughs> it's a horror movie. This is a movie about horror. Right here, it's a horror movie. Let's cut you the trailer of Meet the Blacks coming out April first. Meet to the a Blacks. hood near you. Blacks. It's a matter of time before our wives want to sleep with you. And I do not want you destroying my wife's guts. So I must destroy you. You think I'm scared of you? <laughs> Fuck. Jesus, I'll be back, Mr. Black. You want to go back? <laughs> Doug Goose, motherfucker. What's the rule? What rule? The scary movie rule. Yeah. We got to do the shit the white people don't do. Survive? Bump, bump, bump it out. You have to pay your debt tonight. That's my motherfucking son. And I'll die for his ass. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> hey, man, your breath smell like adult toys. <laughs> do your thing, let me do my thing. This is my fault. You stole my toilet seat. I don't even like toilet seats. It's one thing about me. <laughs> Wow, I have never been inside this home. The crown molding is amazing. This would be a great house to live in. Or a great house to die in! See the purge coming April 1st. I don't like that shit. Oh, now see on the Conan show that we had a fake audience clap and shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that movie seems like it's gonna be funny. <laughs> so, uh, you know what I'm saying? Fuck all that bullshit. We on this motherfucking GGN, man. <laughs> That's where we get it in. You know what I'm talking about? 
How many theaters we talking about this thing will open up in? Uh, we opening at 1,500 screens. 1,500? 1,500, man. I thought the nigga was going to say 150. That nigga said 1,500. You yeah, hear that? It's a big deal right now, man. Just, you know, for everybody out there independent that's working. You know what I mean? Like, this is a big movie for them. You know, it's a big support system right now. We need, you know, just to make sure everybody understand, you know, you're validating Mike Epps. You're validating... Mike Tyson, George Lopez, you know, Little Duval. This is a really big deal for me, man, and for Mike and our whole group because we're, like, really pushing to say, man, we could actually create and own and do our own stuff and not have to ask if it's okay if we make a movie. Hi, I'm Stormy Fronts reporting live from Spread Eagle, Wisconsin. We are dealing with quite a cold front pushing in just the tip right into Spread Eagle. The front of the tip is pushing really hard into Spread Eagle. But don't worry, it'll all be clear by the weekend. It's gonna be quite a steamy weekend in Spread Eagle, Wisconsin. <laughs> I've been doing this thing. I've been rocking six chains. I've been swerving that ring. I've been getting this change. Brother, well, nigga never gon' change. Cause I've been doing this thing. I've been rocking six chains. I've been swerving that ring. I've been getting this change. Brother, well, nigga never gon' change. Cause I've been doing this thing. I've been rocking six chains. Been swerving that ring. I've been getting this change. Brother, well, nigga never gon' change. Nigga never gon' change. Yeah. Yeah. Did you expect? more lead roles like that for yourself? Well, you know, Snoop, I, I hope so, you know. I know this business is a, a, a business where you can really get typecast in the acting world. Mm -hmm. And um, I keep challenging myself to, to reinvent myself all the time in that world. So I wanted to make sure that I'll do a little bit over here on the comedy side. And then when I get a chance, I'll do my drama, you know, because I, I come from that too. You've done you've done a movie with Forrest Whitaker too, right? Forrest Whitaker, Anthony Mackie, and uh, Sanaa Lathis. It was called Repentance. You like that come movie on, too? Nigga, yeah. I fuck with you, nigga. <laughs> I appreciate it, Snoop. You know I do this. I do my work, and I try to stay real humble, and I try to act like I don't see none of it mm -hmm. because I always understand that this business is a lifetime. He's right. And and yes. you know you have to do your work. For me, I have to. Because if I if I get excited about my work, right. I might <laughs> run the shit off the road. You know what I mean? I, 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 that's why I take my hat off to you because I see how you're doing it. You like, you you you've always done it in a way where you you still had fun, but you were still a businessman and you still kept it in the pocket and you always played yourself as as if whatever you did was was you was just as good as your last thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's how I try to do my work. And, and that helps me, you know, always uh, stay in the hunger lane for, for better roles and stuff. I'm about to try to embark Richard Pryor, which is, uh, uh, man, it got me screwed up every day because I'm trying to fit in some shoes, man, that's... Them some big shoes, but you can feel them. They really are, yeah. You can feel them, and, and, yeah. and I'm so glad they gave you that. I appreciate that, that Snoop. Because you, you, you deserve that, and you deserve it to do your thing, and. It, my and man. to get that shit what it deserved, Richard yeah. was the motherfucking greatest to ever do it. To and ever do it, When man. you do it right, you'll be connected to the greatest that, to ever do it. Yeah. I know that. That's my that's uncle. It. That's our yeah. uncle right there. Come on, man. That uncle is, Rich, man. man. <laughs> Tell that story, man. <laughs> Tell that story, Mike. It needs to be told. But, uh, Dion, I want to talk about <clears throat> a couple of your past projects. One being Supremacy. That was a hell of a movie. Man, that was a good movie. Oh, I appreciate it. Great that, movie. Man. Thank um, you. And I love that... Uh, that I think it was 75. 75, yep. Yeah. First movie, man. 75. That was your first one? Dang, it's the first movie I ever did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bro. From there to now, how do you think you are as a director? Completely different. <laughs> same hunger, same energy, same, same, you know, same optimism in terms of like, what, what could I do? How could I do it better? But completely different. I mean, 75 was like, that was nuts, man. You know, first movie, wrote, produced, directed. I was working at the time with Brian Hooks, who was absolutely incredible for me. Mm -hmm. um, he is basically who showed me the entire game. You know what I mean? Brian was, was out here doing this thing. He was doing, he had just did three strikes. Mm -hmm. He was working on, uh, oh, man, working on more projects. And at the time, I was just, a, I was playing basketball, but I had like the, had the bug, I wanted to do film, you know? And Brian was the person that grabbed me and was like, yo, 
this is how you do this, this is how you do that. You know, and I just applied my hustle to what I learned from him. And then 75 was born. And then from there, I never looked back, man. I was just like, all right, I got to do this and do that and continue to get better as a filmmaker. And then that's around the same time I realized that independently, it didn't matter what you were doing as a filmmaker, whatever you create, whatever your product is, it has to be just as good as what they're making at the studio, mm -hmm. or no one cares, mm -hmm. right? So no one cares that I have $100,000 to make a movie. That same box is gonna be sitting next to King Kong and Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. So at that point, that's when I was like, man, I gotta get better and, and become a better student of how you move the camera and how you tell a story and how you make it look gigantic, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, for a budget. So, you know, I applied all of that years later to Supremacy, which, you know, obviously we got a lot of critical acclaim for that. We was hoping to get that film into the Oscar circuit and, you know, there was a lot of diversity issues with that, but we did win the African Academy Award. Um, That's like the Oscars for niggas. You know, we killed it at the Pan-African, you know, it debuted at Cannes. It, it had an incredible run, but that movie actually was my coming out party, man, for people to really see what I do with a camera, how I do it, and you know, how we tell stories. Yeah, they thought a, a white guy directed that movie. Man, you know what's funny? Everything I <laughs> no, pretty much have done, like people be like, a white dude did it. You know like that? that? I did that. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no, you didn't. Yeah, you <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't do no, that No, you one. didn't. No, but you know what else I wanted to tell you? I know we, we, we ran out of time, but here's what, what's really cool. We were talking about Richard Pryor before, and, and it was one of the conversations I had on set of the movie. It was me, Mike, Mike Tyson, and Charlie Murphy all in uh, Mike's, you know, his room. And Paul Mooney. And Paul Mooney. Nigga, don't ever sit here and act like <laughs> you don't know a nigga. And what's great nigga, is- Nigga, no. Right, what's great is people don't really realize when we, when we, when we cut the, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a sequence in Meet the Blacks which deals with the, with the, with the clan, with the Ku Klux Klan. And I remember like the first time we released the first trailer, the PG trailer, right? Where I couldn't put all the, 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 the hard cussing in there, right? So I had to cut it, make it, you know, a little bit cute. So we put the Klan thing in there. People was like, oh my God, I can't believe they got the Klan in the, in the trailer and da 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 da, and what is happening today? And I had to like really pull somebody to the side one time and be like, yo man, let me tell you something, man. Do you know who Paul Mooney and Richard Pryor is? Oh yeah, I know. I said, man, do you know how old this clan gag is? People don't realize, man, that that came from Richard and Paul. Then Dave Chappelle grabbed it, mm -hmm. and 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 white power came from there, right? And then it extended. So for me, when I had to play the part, you know, put it in our film, I put it more like as to pay homage to Paul Mooney, because when we were yeah, able to get him in the film, funny. I was like, yo, it's gonna be super funny. It's gonna be great. He loves it. You know what I mean? And it's just, I'm just kind of like speaking to the fact that comedy, you can't really make new comedy. Mm -mm. We're basically just taking from the greats. You can't reinvent you the wheel, but that's... you can hold the wheel and keep riding. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Or you can put some rims on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. This, so, so this is, we, we excited, Snoop. We're excited, we're excited about this film. April the 1st, Meet the Blacks. This ain't no joke, because you know April the 1st is April Fool's, it right? Is. You try to take over but April Fool's Day, go man. to the movie and it don't be there, then that's going to be some <laughs> bullshit. Like, do I get my money back, nigga, if I pay my ticket in advance? And then they say, well, you know, today is April Fool's, nigga. We ain't working I'm going to say, hey, look here, man. Your ass showed up. You need to get a motherfucking <laughs> ticket. And, and I'm a, these tickets right here uh, to the movie theater, I'm going to be over my grandmother's house selling them on the porch, <laughs> too. So if you want to come over there, get a couple tickets. We got the hookup. Holla up you We do got the hookup. The hookup. Church. Preach. Tabernacle.